Welcome to the Plate Tectonics Review video. This is designed to help students that are taking middle school science in the Summit platform pass a content assessment, but it's useful for any student that's in the middle school science and has to learn about this topic. So the first objective that we talked about is that the fact that the Earth has interior movement and layers which affect the surface of the Earth. So the Earth is split into three or four different segments by scientists. The inner and outer core, which are part of the core, the mantle, and the crust. The mantle makes up most of the volume of the Earth. The crust is just a tiny little sliver of the whole thing. And on the inside, you have the core. The reason we split them into different parts is because they have different composition. And the core is made up of mostly iron and nickel, which cause a denser elements, which cause when the Earth formed and it was a ball of molten lava, those uh, sunk to the bottom. The core is actually, the inner part is solid because it's under a lot of pressure. But the outer core is still hot enough and not under enough of pressure to be melted, which is great because that actually creates the magnetic field of the Earth as that whole Earth spins and the, and the magma there spins in circles. And it's a metal and it creates electrical currents that actually rotating around create the magnetic field that protects our atmosphere from the solar winds. Life without that would not be possible, right? The mantle, which makes up most of the volume of the Earth, is made of lighter elements like magnesium, silicon, and oxygen. And it's mostly solid, but it acts like a plastic that actually flows around, carrying heat from the core towards the crust. The crust is solid, and that's where life on Earth is, a tiny little sliver. And it's made of aluminum, oxygen, and silicon, even lighter elements that the mantle is made up of. Now, we know this because we use seismic waves to map the inside of the Earth because, of course, we have not dug up down in there. Now, the... Layers of the crust are actually cracked into pieces because of all the heat trying to escape. And so the Earth has what is called plates. And these plates motion relative to each other is what causes most of the features that we see in the surface. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, these plates are moving because the heat of the core warms up the mantle, which then, because it's plastic-like, flows rock, even though it's rock. Think of a really, really thick lava magma will actually start rising as it becomes less dense and hotter, right? And then it gets to the top of the crust, cools down, gets denser again, sinks back to the bottom, heats up again, and that becomes a cycle, which is called a mental convection cell, that acts like wheels, which will really drag the pieces of the crust with it, causing the plates to move with. And that was the first objective. But before we finish it, there are two main action areas of motion near the 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 crust they are important to talk about, which are the spreading zones and subduction zones. Now, the spreading zones will be the ones where the magma is rising and moving apart from each other, and that is where the divergent boundaries are and where the plates are separating and new seafloor is forming as the lava seeps through in between the plates. Then you have convergent boundaries or, or, or uh, subducting zones, which where the gravity of the sinking plate pulls the plate down to the bottom and melts away, destroying the crust with it. And that cycle creates new crust and destroys old crust, recycling materials across millions and millions of years in the history of the Earth. The second objective talks about those motions in context and the different features of geological structures that happen in the boundaries because of them. There are three main kinds of boundaries. I started already talking about that. You have the convergent boundary where the plates collide against each other and you get those subduction zones. You have divergent boundaries where you have the divergent and separating plates that actually cause lava to seep through and form new crust. And you have sometimes crust moving slide past each other, causing what is called a transform boundary. Now, each of these boundaries have unique features that are important to know about. But there is a couple of features that show up in all of them. The first is whenever you have plates moving past each other, you're going to have rocks that get stuck to each other and a lot of tension. Then it's going to end up causing the earth to crack. Those cracks are called fault lines. Now, when rocks get caught across those fault lines, they deform over long periods of time. And that, all that strain causes the rock like to bend like an elastic until it can't take it anymore or it slides away or it cracks. Suddenly, it is allowed to deform again and release that energy in a violent shock wave that's called earthquakes. Both of those will be common whenever there are boundaries. And so you're going to see them everywhere in all three kinds of boundaries. Then you have volcanoes. Volcanoes are tend, to, tend to be more common in divergent and convergent boundaries because the convergent boundary will have a plate that melts as it sinks underneath. And that melting plate will push through the other plate, causing a volcano to happen. 
And you also have uh, divergent volcanoes, which happen because, like I said, lava seeps between the separating plates. They are very different kinds of volcanoes. And they're also, by the way, hotspot volcanoes that happen away from boundaries. But for the context of plate tectonics, the, we talked about divergent and convergent volcanoes. Now, these earthquakes and volcanoes will tend to happen uh, around the boundaries. So you can actually use them to trace where the boundaries are. If you compare the boundaries on the right picture with the actual location of earthquakes and volcanoes, you can see that they actually trace the boundaries of the world. The volcanoes around the Pacific Basin uh, Ocean actually are called the Ring of Fire. That's because the Pacific Ocean is shrinking as the other plates collide against it. And as the Pacific plate shrinks and subducts underneath those plates, it melts through those plates and causes volcanoes to happen. So there's a large chain of island arc volcanoes in the left part of the Pacific. And on the right side, you get uh, island uh, volcanic mountain ranges because of that subducting plates. The divergent boundaries, unique features, will be that because they're separating, you're going to get that rift valley or that crack in the surface of the earth through which lava seeps through, forming new seafloor crust. That's right, because eventually as the, the, the continent splits like it did here with Africa, separating the Arabian Peninsula from Africa, they used to be one piece, water will actually go from oceans which are around it, will actually seep through and form new oceans. So the Red Sea is constantly splitting and eventually will become a new ocean there. The same thing is happening right now with the eastern part of Africa. It's cracking. And as it cracks, it will eventually happen that too. That's what this picture up here is. Now, over long, long periods of time, that will actually develop into a large ocean basin like the Atlantic Ocean is, which separated South America from Africa and North America from Europe. And in the middle of that ocean, you're going to get what is called a mid-ocean ridge. And that's because the separating plates will crumble and cause peaks and valleys in between. Now, inside the mid-ocean ridge, at the middle, you're going to have the new seafloor form, forming from the melting and rising lava that solidifies right at the middle in that rift valley. Now, of course, because there are movements, you're going to also have fault lines and earthquakes in those areas. The volcanoes here will tend to be very runny lava because it's coming straight from the mantle and and actually seeping through. And so it's not going to be as explosive as the volcanoes that happen near convergent boundaries. Speaking of convergent boundaries, convergent boundaries' unique features are going to be the formation of large mountain ranges as the plates collide with each other and crumble. Also, the existence of a subducting plate because one will end up sinking underneath the other. That subducting plate is, is going to end up melting. And if it is an ocean plate, you're also going to have a deep gash in the ocean that we call a trench. Now, the plate that melts actually ends up trying to push through the surface, that melting rock, the magma, causing volcanoes to happen in the island chains, when, which form when the ocean collides with the ocean, or mountain ranges, which form when the ocean collides with a continent. Now, when a continent collides with a continental plate, that's the, the, the mountain ranges that form are enormous and too thick, for the, for the lava to melt through. So you normally won't see a lot of volcanoes forming there. That's like the Himalayas is a good example of that. The, the western coast of America and all the volcanoes in there are a good example of the ocean versus continent collision. And places like the Philippines, uh, uh, Japan, and New Zealand are good examples of, of island arcs, which are forming because of collisions between two oceanic plates. Now, the volcanoes here are going to be very different from the volcanoes of the divergent boundaries because this, this is magma that came from a melting plate, not from directly from the mantle. And it's also magma that's melting through a plate. And so with it, it will pick up water vapor. It will pick up other minerals that will thicken the lava and make it be more explosive when it actually evaporate, uh, or actually erupts. So these will tend to be much more explosive. And they're actually called strato volcanoes. Uh, instead of shield volcanoes, which form in uh, the other types of uh, seepy kind of lavas. So here you see a picture of all these kinds of convergent boundaries and how the uh, and how the mountain ranges tend to form near them. So you see the uh, Rocky Mountains and the Andes form near the western coast of South America because of the collision between the Nazca Plate and Pacific Plates. And you also see mountain ranges such as the Alps because of the uh, collision between Africa and the Eurasian plate. You also see mountain ranges in 
between uh, India and Eurasian plate, like the uh, Himalayas. And you see the island arcs that I talked about. So you see New Zealand and the Philippines and the uh, Polynesian islands and then Japan. All of those are parts of volcanic island arches because of the collision between two oceanic plates. Now, of course, all around that you see volcanoes also because of that convergence, except on the Himalayas, since there are two continents colliding there and the mountains are massive. Tons and tons of earthquakes, though, in near those convergent zones of the world. Uh, of note, of course, is that mountains form because of these collisions. So all mountains in the planet are because of that. Even the Appalachians, which are not near a, a boundary right now, they formed near a boundary a long, long time ago when Pangaea formed. So that's why they're there. And also of important note is that, we, as we talked about, when the continents collide with oceans, the ocean is the one that sinks underneath. And that's because the ocean came from that mid-ocean ridge and straight from the mantle, which tends to have denser materials than the, con the uh, rest of the crust does. And therefore, because it's a younger, denser crust, it will tend to sink underneath when it collides with the continent. Another interesting thing that happens, of course, is that plates that do, do collide, one of them will end up melting and subducting. And when it's ocean versus ocean or continent versus continent, one of them has to win, right? So eventually they'll slip past each other and the one that goes underneath will melt away. And as such, uh, crust material ends up getting recycled. Now, don't forget that the one that's continent versus continent doesn't get the volcanoes because of the massive amount of ranges that form in between them. And if there is an ocean involved in the collision, you get a trench, which is a deep gash in the actual surface of the Earth because the ocean is already deep and then it's going to subduct underneath. And so you're going to get a much, much deeper trench. The Marianas Trench is especially deep because the Pacific Ocean is the oldest and deepest ocean in the world. And then you have a continental collision, uh, uh, ocean versus ocean collision there, and that caused it to be even deeper. Deeper even than the Mount Everest is high. So that just gives you an idea about that. Don't forget that the unique features of convergent boundaries is subduction, trenches, and mountain ranges. But trenches are only going to be around where the um, ocean is involved. Volcanoes are not unique to this. Uh, explosive volcanoes are. But volcanoes will also happen in, in uh, divergent boundaries and in hotspot volcanoes. The last type of boundary to talk about is a transform boundary, and that's when plates pass, slide past each other. And they're not going to see any volcanoes or mountains in these, but there are going to be still be faults and earthquakes because rocks will constantly get trapped against each other and those strike and slip faults. And they can actually cause separation between ridges in the middle of the ocean as the, uh, as the plates actually move past each other. There are very few transformed boundaries in the world compared to uh, uh, the mid-ocean ridges, but the earth doesn't actually crack nice and neatly. So if you look at the authentic uh, mid-ocean ridge, there are several spots where there are situations like this, where the ocean ridge gets split in half and then sh shifts uh, into two separate chunks because of the movement, lateral movement between those plates. You gotta remember that just because there's a crack there, it doesn't mean that the crack here will move at the same speed as the crack there. And so you end up having those lateral movements between plates as well. A famous uh, transform boundary happens in California uh, between the North American plate and another piece of the plate that's over here. It's a tiny piece. And that causes uh, the St. Andrews fault, which is a famous kind of strike and slip fault in a transform boundary. There are multiple transform boundaries around the world. There's a large one in the Caribbean. There's a large one over here in the Philippines. By the way, look at the Philippines and how many cracks are in that area, right? Wow. That's why they get so many earthquakes and tsunamis because it's some serious tectonic plate action happening over there. So that's it. And this kind of picture uh, reviews all of those features in one. You can pause here and see how they all fit together. The only one that's interesting that we have not talked about is the idea of a hotspot volcano. And those are the ones that happen away from boundaries. They just push through and melt through the crust. It's more likely to happen near the oceanic crust. And when they do, they form uh, uh, island chains because the, we're going to talk about that in a second. Hawaii is a good example because the plate keeps moving and the hotspot stays there. And so form a chain of volcanic islands. Now, those volcanic islands end up hitting the continent and getting scraped by the continental crust. And then as, as the oceanic uh, crust melts underneath, and that makes the continents also grow over time. Continents also grow over time and get thicker because they crumble as they collide with uh, each other or with oceanic plates. And because the rising magma coming from subducting plates ends up spilling over 
and adding more material over the top of the continents. And so at, over time, things like island arches and hotspot volcanoes and volcanoes will uh, just get scraped by and added to the continents, making them thicker and thicker and bigger and bigger over time. And of course, you have the divergent boundary, which is why it explains the existence of ocean basins. They split and they're made of material which is denser coming from the mantle. You got transform boundaries, which cause shifts be between the plates, and lateral shifts, and volcanoes are going to be happening both at these divergent boundaries and at the subducting plates. Mountains are only going to happen near convergent boundaries. Island chains are basically mountains, but starting from the bottom of the ocean, near convergent boundaries between oceans and oceans. You got the mid-ocean ridge, which is the, with the crumbling that happens because the earth is separating. Uh, you have trenches, which form whenever the ocean is sinking underneath an, uh, another piece of crust. I think I basically cover all the features. And oh yes, in earthquakes and volcano earthquakes and faults all across these boundaries, because whenever you have rocks moving, they're going to get stuck to each other. They're going to crack and they're going to form for uh, faults and earthquakes. Now, this whole process causes formation of supercontinents over time, as continents collide against each other, and then they will crack and split again. And that's what happened with the history of the last continent cycle. That you see on the screen right now. It started with Pangaea 225 million years ago. There were supercontinents before that, but the most recent one is this one. And then Pangaea cracked in half into Laurasian Gondwana. And that would become the uh, a piece of the Atlantic Ocean. Then Gondwana also cracked into what would become a piece of the Indian Ocean. <coughs> Sorry. And then after that happened, the continents kept spreading as the ocean ridges in those oceans kept pushing the continents apart. Now, this is a process that took multiple, 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 multiple millions of years, right? Because it moves very, very slowly, only about 10 to 20 centimeters a year. Now, the last supercontinent was called Pangaea, and eventually the continents will actually uh, meet on the opposite side because as they continue to split apart, they will eventually meet on the side of the planet since the Earth is a sphere. And this continues to happen. The Pacific Ocean will continue to shrink, and the Atlantic and Indian Ocean will continue to grow, which is what explains the fact that Antarctica shifted southwards, Australia shifted away from India, and India actually ended up hitting against Asia because of the Indian Ocean growing and the ridges which are there. And then, likewise, the Atlantic Ocean is separating South Africa, South America in, in, in Africa, and North America from Europe. And because this is happening, you can imagine that these will collide on the opposite side, forming a new supercontinent. But that's only going to happen when the Pacific, which is what's left of the super ocean that was around Pangaea, continues to shrink and completely disappear. That's going to take a very, very long time. Now, Hawaii is all the way over here in the Pacific Ocean, where my mouse is right now. So it's far from a boundary. But like I said, there's a hot spot there. And that hot spot will shift away from the, the island itself, will shift away from the hotspot as the Pacific plate moves. So because it does that, little by little, the islands will actually shift away and stop growing and then get eroded by the ocean waves and currents into smaller and smaller islands. And new islands will form behind them. That's already happening. There's a new island forming uh, uh, to the south, I guess, to the east of Hawaii. And as Hawaii gets pushed to the west, because the Pacific plate is moving, it will end up shrinking just like the other islands, Maui, Oahu, Kauai, and Molokai all did. In fact, there are seamounts past Kauai, which are below the sea level uh, and completely eroded already that long, long time ago used to be over that hot spot. So this is something that happened over the 4 million year period as Hawaii forms and erodes away. And so these are an example of a classic hotspot volcano. And this, eventually, the Hawaii will continue to shift until the, this oceanic plate hits a continent, and then the continental plate will scrape off those seamounts from the oceanic plate of the Pacific as it melts underneath it. There are hotspot volcanoes, by the way, in continents, but it's harder to happen because it has to melt to a much thicker um, plate. But in Yellowstone, is a good example of, a, of such a place. All right, and uh, the last thing I want to talk about is the evidence that exists to prove that continents are shifting. First, you have the fact that the continents look like they fit like puzzle pieces, 
like South America fits perfectly in Africa. So it's a good example of that. And Antarctica, India, and Australia could also fit like into a big piece. All of this was called Gondwana, right? But if you look at Gondwana, there are, there are fossils of, of animals that used to live all throughout it. But now they're separated by oceans. How is that possible? That's because they used to live in the same place. So ancient fossils in, the, in, in different continents separated by oceans are example of, of why uh, we, we think the continents used to be together. You also have examples of glacial deposits and changes in climate on the continents. For example, uh, in Antarctica, which is now a polar region, it used to be more tropical, and there used to be deserts and rainforests in Antarctica underneath all that ice. And meanwhile, places which are now tropical have glacial deposits, which are erosion and, and huge boulders of rock carried away in a way that only glaciers could. But that doesn't make sense in a place that's that's tropical and, 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 and low on the ground, right? Not a mountain. So the only way that can explain that is that it used to be underneath a lot of ice. Now, it's true that climate change could also explain that. And the, there are changes in cycles to the uh, climate of the Earth, due to orbital changes, changes in the sun, solar output. But that doesn't explain the fact that Antarctica, which is in a polar region, used to be full of deserts and tropical areas, right? So it's so together with climate change, these these changes in the continental climate are because the continents themselves used to be in different positions in the planet. One last piece of evidence is if you actually look at the age of the seafloor and date it with radioactive isotopes or just look at the amount of sediment that's gathered on seafloors, you will see that there's way more sediment near the edges. Now, that does make sense because the, the continents dump sediments in it from eroding uh, rain and rivers, that position, right? But I'm talking more about the sediments coming from dead animals and from the ocean, like things like diatoms that gather over time. The amount of sediment in a diatom fossils, if you will, is much bigger near the edges of the oceans than in the middle. And that's because the middle is younger. That's the part that's actually spreading and where the new seafloor is forming. But as the seafloor forms and, and spreads, it gets older and older as it goes to the edges. So the parts near the continents used to be at the middle, right, when the continents used to be close together. And that is in itself a piece of evidence of this as well. And you can date those rocks, and you can see patterns of alternating magnetic field arrangements because the Earth poles flip ever so often, the magnetic poles. All of that is evidence that this ocean floor has literally been spreading over long periods of time and thus separating the continents. And you can actually look at that to see how long ago it's been since the continents used to be together. Because there are no rocks there older than, say, 225 million years because that ocean wasn't there. This means new oceans are constantly forming in the planet and old oceans are constantly going away. And in between, the continents are constantly growing as they pick up pieces from the oceans as they scrape by them and collide with each other and get thicker and new mountains form. And then they get eroded and the sediments get dumped in the oceans and some of those sediments subduct. And sometimes the continental plates collide with other continental plates, and they, they too subduct. And in that way, material gets recycled as well. But overall, this cycle over the last four billions of years has continued to create new continents and new oceans and continue to change the history of life on this planet uh, because of it. So that is plate tectonics. I hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you next time. Don't do anything that would make you more proud.